Love is Blind is a perfect example of why pick-me's make terrible friends and can't be trusted. Now, you probably think I'm talking about Sarah Ann, and I am, but I'm also talking about Lara. And of course, the villain at the center of this whole thing that pitted these two women against each other, although they are still accountable for being so male-centered, is Jeremy, or however you say his name. I'm just going to say Jeremy, because that's how we say it in the South. Um, I do love that he says, I'm looking for someone who can match my energy. Well, brah, you suck. So you did that, because uh, Sarah Ann sucks too. And Laura is not much better. Okay, by the way, I don't know these people. Never will. Don't care. And also, how they are edited is what controls the narrative. So, as, and I say this as someone who was on a, a National Geographic reality show for one episode and the way they made the worst person look like the hero. Uh, so I learned this firsthand, not to necessarily trust the edit. But given what we know, you're trash. You're trash, Jeremy. You're trash, Laura. And Sarah Ann, I hope you enjoyed that jet ski. I hope you, you end up with Jeremy. Because y'all deserve each other, really. As much as I don't like AD's relationship with Clay, I think she deserves so much better. And I think this man is maybe going to set her back. And I'm still pissed at what Matthew did to her. Um, this woman is the only person who seems willing to call people out for things that need to be called out. And she is the most reliable friend on this whole cat. This is a girl's girl right here. And I swear, the only reason why I watch any of these dating shows, other than to use teachable moments, is because I usually genuinely appreciate the relationships that happen between usually just the women. Um... But the, 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 the friendships is why we watch this show, which is why you suck. You suck. I understand that you, uh, you know, I, we all have some pick me in us. You can't get out of patriarchy without centering men on some level. But uh, you're, you're still like guilty. So understand any of this. And if you haven't seen Love is Blind, I'm so jealous. I can't get back the however many, 10 hours or whatever. Nine hours I've already spent watching it and then the extra nine hours I went going back and taking photos to make this video, these videos. Can't get that back. Hope y'all appreciate this content because uh, it's very time consuming, but I think it's important because this one, any time, okay. If you haven't noticed, the couples that usually don't make it or if they make it, but you're like, they kind of suck. Uh, don't seem healthy. The couples that get together at the very end where there was some sort of love triangle or I can't decide, they never make it. Why do you think that is? Right? Like, I'm telling you, if men do not like you right out of the gate, don't bother with them. If they have such a hard decision, oh, 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 you're not special. I know this is a dating show, and da, 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 but like, notice... The couple that are really into each other, they get they get engaged like that. Cause he he's they're both like, wow, this I this one. This one. And they want to lock it down instead of playing the stupid game. So I already knew this couple would not make it because Jeremy couldn't decide. He just couldn't decide. Just like Jimmy. Jimmy. Jimmy, you're gonna get your own video soon. Um, anyway, she was already like like, if you are competing with another woman, like, do you have, I will never fight for a man. The fact that she was already, like, fighting for him and competing with another woman, I knew this would not work out. Like, these relationships never work out on Love is Blind. If you've noticed, other than maybe Barrett and What's-Her-Butt from season one, who I think those two deserve each other, <laughs> I don't like either one of them. Whatever. Like, I can understand being torn because you don't have enough information yet but like th th this woman was already humiliating herself by like competing with another woman I I'm telling you if my husband would like cheated on me I'm not gonna fight for that fork off go have her I am never gonna degrade myself enough to fight for a man to try to convince him that I'm good enough to be chosen, to be picked. And they, they, these women are like, they just want to be picked. I don't believe they're actually ready for love. I think they want to love and be loved. But I don't, I don't think they're ready for love because it's, it, their primary goal is validation. And that's rooted in ego. That is not heart. That is not soul. That is not spirit. That is ego and like 
childhood trauma and whatever, whatever, um, uh, you know, patriarchal conditioning that like you've won. If you get chosen, you've won, but that is not love. So this woman kind of pit herself against, she thought she won. She thought she won. Look at the way she talks about this. So when she was talking to one of her buddies in the, whatever, the women's lounge, or whatever, she's like, we really like each other. We align on this. La, 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 la. And then she's all like, you know, Sarah Ann, like, you know, I feel like I'm helping her out because I don't think she has any idea I'm dating Jeremy. So this is the other thing. Like, Sarah Ann didn't strategize well. She's running her mouth. Being like, Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy. And Laura's like, nah, I'm going to win, right? Like, Laura's almost Matthewing this whole thing. <laughs> I, she's confiding in some people, but she's all like being sneaky, like, okay, let her talk. I understand them not wanting to talk. But she, like, it's just the way she's just, I believe Laura was, this is about her ego. Because the way that whenever she felt threatened by Laura, uh, what's her butt? She heard the Sarah woman talking about like, oh my God, like, damn my. The next time Laura went into those pods, she was like, oh my God, I just, I, I think she manipulated the whole situation. I'm just, uh, I just like, I'm gonna put all my cards on the table. Like, la, 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 la. I don't know. Like it's, uh, so many women think that just telling a man like you're the one is going to do it. Don't do that. Like Laura won, but she actually lost in the end. Do not show your hand to men. Don't let them think. That, like, they get to choose and you're the... I mean, we saw what happened last season with Johnny. Man, she was like, she turned down the dude who ended up being a nice guy who cheated on her anyway. Like, all these men are trash! They're all the villain at this point. I don't like any of them. Even that one who's obsessed with birth control doesn't seem like a bad guy. But, like, what is your problem, dude? Like, whatever. That I don't care. Look at Laura. Like, La Laura actually reminds, I don't know if she's Southern, but she reminds me of a lot of Southern white women. And I come, I am a Southern white woman, so I know Southern white women talk. I'm not saying that Southern white women are the only ones who do this, but boy, are we calculating. And we try to play off as like innocent and being nice. Oh man, we're like, a, a, a Southern white woman will look you dead in the eye and be like, yeah. And then as soon as you walk away, be like, say the meanest crap about you. And again, I know that's not just Southern white women, but we are like, ah. That's why when I moved to New York, I was like, wow, these people be, they're more honest here. They'll be like, fuck you, you know, instead of being like, ah, ah, stab, stab, stab in the back. There's a particular kind of smiling violence of white women um, that horrifies me and one reason why I can't stand that area. You have to decode everything. What do you really mean? Because you're smiling, but I'm pretty sure you don't mean that. I took my husband to the South uh, after we got married and he was like, this place is terrifying. Like, does anybody mean what they say here? And I'm like, no. <laughs> Not the white women, at least. And then he was like, wow, I can really tell you've worked on yourself. <laughs> because you're not like this, but this is what you grew up around. Like, wow. I was like, thank you. It's, it's really hard to unlearn this. Anyway, I, the way she was like, you know, I just don't like, I don't want to hurt her. Like, whatever. Just say that you're, you hate her. You're competing with her. You want to win. <laughs> uh, you know, she might as well just said, well, bless her heart. Because that's what all this is. Because this is what she really means. What she really wants to say to Sarah is like, back off, honey. I am I won. But, you know, she's just concerned for Sarah. And then this all blew up in her face. So I think it's kind of karmic. Because this is what she really wanted to say to Sarah. Step back, Bart. Uh, well, Sarah did, but not really. Because two can play at that game. You see, after Sarah got dumped by Jeremy, she came into the, the women's lounge and was like, to Laura, she goes, it's you. Sarah pretended like she didn't know Laura was involved with him. But she knew. Then Laura's all like, oh, I didn't want to say anything. I didn't know. I'm so sorry. Like, th this is like the most white woman, southern white woman conversation ever. It's all good. I'm so sorry. It's okay. No. Meanwhile, they're both like plotting and scheming and blah. 
Jonathan and Laura's like, no, I mean, I thought I was going ham. Y'all, this is all performing, okay? And again, I know it's not just Southern white women who do this. I'm just telling you, it's next level there. So then Sarah Ann, you're fine. You're fine. Trust me. Like, you got nothing to worry about. I'm happy for you. Like, this is just so funny to me. I literally... I'm like reliving my childhood, <laughs> like watching these interactions between these women. Like, no, it's fine. I'm so happy for you. Ah. And then, ah, ah, ah. like, seriously, I, I think growing up in the South around women like this is why I don't, I have trust issues. Nobody says what they mean or means what they say. It's all performing and it's exhausting. And it's literally like decoding everything. Everything. Again, it is so confusing for my husband because in French culture is much more direct. And he was just like, wait, what's happening? And I'd be like, oh, like this is what they mean when they say that. That's not actually what they mean. I literally had to like translate even though he speaks perfect English. <laughs> like, I'm like, you don't speak Southern white woman though. Passive aggressive, um, uh, image management obsessed, manipulative. Like, let me tell you, I literally did a lot of translating for him in the very short period of time we were there. Because he was just like, what? He actually said, this feels more violent than actual violence. Because the they're smiling when they say it. And I can't like... I look crazy if I get mad. I'm like, yeah, welcome. Welcome to the South. All this stuff. I'm happy for you. You're not happy for her, Sarah Ann. And I knew it when I was like, I don't trust this. And I was right. Like, did you guys like have a heart to heart on your date? They're all heart to heart. <laughs> God, these women, like these women are pretending to be really kind and supporting and loving. And really they're posturing like, She's like, oh, did you have a hard time? All of them were. Yeah. Like, oh. And then she said all this. I'm sad, but I'm really like, I'm happy people are finding their person. And that it's working. Look at her face. And then Laura being like, yeah, you're a bad bitch. Like, girl, like, the, 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 they're trying to, oh. Uh. Like, her, her, like, reassuring Sarah Ann being like, you're such a bad bitch. She doesn't mean any of it. It's actually, and you can tell, she's just like, mm hmm I hate you more. Like, these women hate each other in this conversation, and they're both pretending like they like each other. And it's all over. This douche. Like, this smug little prick. And Laura being like, you deserve the world. But not my man. You deserve the world, but not my man. I won. You deserve someone that wants you 1,000%. Well, Laura, I could say the same thing about you. You're literally fighting over the same man. He does, I mean, the fact that it took him so long to make this decision, he clearly doesn't like you a thousand percent. And we'll see soon uh, when he, he, he like sabotages it to dump you. And then again, this is foreshadowing right here. Yeah, I'll have my moment. And you don't know that that's actually happening on this show, Lara. Like she is plotting here. Please don't let men make you look like a fool like this. I got a man, I got a man, my man, you know, like he chose me, blah, blah, blah. That is not something to brag about. But all of us with daddy issues, and I don't mean a minimal, I hate that term, but it, all of us who have a father wound or some, or even like a mother wound, like a parent wound, but a lot of times it's, it's with, with our dad because most dads suck. Most dads suck. And most dads don't give their daughters the time and attention they deserve because, you know, they're too busy playing football with the little Jimmys and Jeremy's. And so uh, a lot of girls are just desperate for a man who will actually pay attention to them, unlike their own fathers. And if they can get some loser like Jeremy, if they can win, then they can heal all that. And it doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. You ju we just humiliate ourselves. And we look desperate. Both these women look desperate to be chosen. And they both get played. And they both look so bad. Like, she's the villain and Laura's the victim, even though I don't think Laura is a victim in this. I don't like that Jeremy did that to her, but I don't know. Laura played a game too. What's so funny to me is that, especially now that we know that uh, Jeremy was engaged and was like a stepdad, basically, to another child, uh, was living in that house that he showed Laura with, uh, I think that's the house he lived in with uh, his ex fiance and was like literally just right out of the engagement goes right onto this show it's like laura's my forever person 
Even though I literally just broke up with someone like yesterday who I also liked equally as much. I'm sure. Lars, my favorite part. Look at his face. Lars, the person for me. Hmm. Sarah Ann. Now, I'm not a fan of, uh, before Sarah Ann became the villain <laughs> who went after an engaged man, I wasn't a fan of her anyway. I'm conservative. I'm a huge patriot. Unless you are a fan of a football team that used to have that trash Tom Brady dude, whatever. I don't know. Does he even still like play with them? I don't know. I don't care. I just know him as a bad dad and husband, honestly. But like any time, any time, any time a, uh, someone from the U.S. says they're a huge patriot, I'm like, uh, Rushers, Rushers. Like, not not a friend of women, okay? Because if you actually know the United States history, the uh, United States hates women. It hates indigenous people. It hates black people. It literally it hates disabled people. It hates everybody but white rich men. So I don't know what you're patriotic about, but uh. Probably has like a truck or something with American flag on it. Um, uh, and you're conservative. And then when Jeremy asked her about abortion, she's like, I mean, I'm not like a person that's just like, hell yeah, go get an abortion. Who is like that? Who is like that, Sarah Ann? I guarantee one person is going to be like that. When this dude knocks you up and then leaves you, you're going to be like, hell yeah, I'm going to get an abortion. Because the rules only apply to everybody else for women who think like this. I promise you, Sarah Ann's probably had an abortion. I wouldn't be surprised. And then she pulled this crap being like, I mean, if two consensual adults have snag and they end up, a woman ends up pregnant. This is somebody who's probably listening to Red Pill. Hold women accountable. Hold them accountable. I'm going to hold you accountable right now. You tried to break up an engagement. That's accountability. She even said this crap. I don't think abortion should be used as birth control. Nobody's doing that. Okay, maybe one in a million people are doing this. Sarah Ann. But nobody's doing this. God, stop believing this crap. I promise you, Sarah Ann is the kind of person who's going to get an abortion and never tell anyone about it. Liar. I bet she's just saying this crap to win over Jeremy. And then when Jeremy's all like, you know, I don't think as a man that I should have an opinion on that. Yes, you should. If you care about women's health and women's lives, you should have an opinion. Now, you do not get a say in what the woman you knock up because you're too lazy to put on a condom or take responsibility for your own sperm, the active ingredient in pregnancy. But you should have an opinion about women as a collective's right to health care. Okay? So, Jeremy, nice try. He also tried to win us over when he was like, my dad's, he kept talking about his dead dad. Yeah, I have a dead dad too, bro. A lot of us do. I mean, whatever. We like it when you, I mean, I know this is all edited, blah. But like, when he was like, yeah, you know, if we were to get married, the first thing I want to do is take you to my dad's cemetery. <laughs> and she fell for, oh, oh, that's so cute. You loved your dad and you want to take me to the, the cemetery. What? Like, I get it. I took Anthony to my dad's grave because I went to go visit it. And he wanted to come along. But I wasn't like, I'm going to I'm gonna let you meet my daddy. Don't you feel special? You get to meet my dead daddy decaying under this thing in the veteran cemetery. Because like so many men in the U.S., uh, the white rich men just threw him into Vietnam so that he could sacrifice for his country for imperialism like they're still doing. Okay, that's another video. Sorry, I get carried away. My point is like, don't fall for this crap. Jeremy is like not be, he's, he's using his dead dad to seem vulnerable. And yeah, they're supposed to share stuff. But he mentions his dead dad to both these women a little too much. Men will use any kind of, they will exploit women's empathy and sympathy as much as they can. And ours! Oliver's like, Jeremy's such a good guy. Trash! And one last thing, Sarah Ann. If you don't think politics belong in a lot of conversations, the personal is political. You should absolutely be talking about politics. Because if this man is like, yeah, I think um, no-fault divorce should be illegal. And you marry this uh, schmuck, you're trapped. Like, politics is in the marriage. Politics is in every area of our life. <gasps> like, I don't, I don't care about politics. Well, you should, because guess who does care about politics? All the people in power. And your old boomer grandparents who are like, yay, Mitch McConnell, because they're showing up at the polls. So just like Jimmy, 
When Jeremy had to turn to, not had to, well, he did. He had to make a decision. Finally, in the 11th hour, what does he do? He hides behind the couch and makes it all about him. Don't you feel sorry for me? I had to choose? <laughs> Bro. He's all like, ah, it's just so hard. I'm being forced to make a decision. And he's all like, I mean, I've seen grown men cry almost every day. It's rough over here. Us poor guys have to make a decision. <laughs> Like, these guys, like, the Jimmy did the same thing. Good, it's just so rough. And the women are like, how is this hard on you? I'm the one being broken up with. Shut up, right? And look, he's literally hiding behind a couch. Like... So all the times that Jeremy says he wants Laura to be his forever person, after literally just deciding <laughs> against his other uh, possible forever person, now that we know this dude has already been engaged and like owned a home with another woman and now he's just like engaged again and then we see how quickly he leaves Laura. It's like, bro, you just talking out your mouth, right? Just like Jimmy. Jimmy is the king of double talk or whatever the word is. Says one thing and actions are literally the opposite of that, which is so confusing. But once you start to see it, you can't unsee it. Everything that Jimmy says is in direct conflict with his actions. And drama does it too. And then Laura, like an idiot, was like, no, you were the only one for me from day one. Don't give that men that much power over you. Seriously, every season, women go on here and they're like, you're the only one for me. And they're like, cool, well, I'm choosing between a few. <laughs> like, right out of the gate, you look desperate. Hold your cards close. This is not vulnerability. First of all, Brene Brown kind of sucks. And I need to make a video on that. But showing your hand with men and telling them information that they will then use to exploit you or play you or work against, that is not vulnerability. That's being stupid. Don't do this. You're my number one. Let him say that first. Like, he's the one who's going to benefit from marriage. Why would you tell him? that so he has even more of the upper hands like no and then she's like did i just find my baby daddy like after he proposed okay that's weird i mean okay it's a joke but a lot of jokes aren't really jokes you know what i mean and then when they finally meet like this is after he proposes and she's like yes um he's like you know because I'm, I'm i'm doing this once and i'm done <laughs> okay no one asked again anytime men offer this information this, like, I've already shown you examples of, like, uh, this is what Matthew did. Every time Matthew made a declaration of something, it was complete BS because it was actually him covering for his, for the lie, right? Be very careful of what men say out of nowhere, like, this is it. I'm done after this. You're it. Like, why are you saying all this? It's, it's like, oh, could it be because you were literally, like, engaged when they recruited you for the, like, <laughs> I'm not screwing around with this stuff. Okay, no one said you were. I've been single, doing my own thing. For what, a month before you came on this show? Like, I know the timeline is weird, whatever. I also know that they do, I, I, my friends work in casting. Like, I know how they cast these shows. I know that they reach out to them on Instagram and that, it, you know, whatever, it's so many months in advance, la, 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 la. But like, bro, you were not out here to be single very long. Like, what, for like, I don't even know couple months like this guy makes it sound like he's never met anyone before and now he's found the woman and he's short okay lied about being full-on engaged living in a house with another woman even literally lying to this woman's face when she get visits your house like god i mean like that was fun being single for like two days but i never really wanted anybody around me until i met you i've never wanted to be with someone before other than my ex-fiance till i met you this is like the first person I actually want to like, to like be there. Like, again, he's just offering all this because he's a liar. These men who say all of this stuff with so much confidence when no one asks, she's not like, like, she's not saying this stuff until she responds to it. Seriously. Go watch my Matthew video. Every single thing that Matthew said as a declaration was either a lie or projection and, or like him afraid of being found out. These men do it all the time. And Jimmy does the same thing. No, I, I, I don't care what you look like. I don't care what you look like. I don't care what you like. He said it all the time. And clearly he cared what you look like. He did nothing but make that Chelsea or Megan Fox lady, whatever, insecure about her looks. He made comments all the time. 
Be, like, when they met, you're gorgeous. You're gorgeous. You're gorgeous. I don't care about your looks. I don't care about your looks. Like, who are you trying to convince, bro? That's what he's doing here. That's what he's doing here. And she's falling for it because she just needs to hear that. I don't even believe she even liked this guy that much. He's probably, like, the best option she had. And a lot of these women, just like uh, Chelsea or what? Is that her, is that her name? I'm just going to call her Megan Fox because she, that's how she rigged the game was calling herself Megan Fox. Like, I don't, she didn't deserve to be treated the way she was by Jimmy, but she rigged the game by giving away what she looked like. Unlike AD and all the other women who have ever been asked and they don't say anything, that's what you're supposed to do. She's like, I look like, no, she got Jimmy. But just like the Megan Fox lady, I think this woman wasn't really there for love. This was more about her ego and getting picked. And now we're supposed to feel sorry for her that she's getting played when she set herself up by positioning herself and competing with another woman to begin with and talking trash. Now, I know it sounds like I'm being really hard on Laura, but this is why I don't like Laura. She positioned herself as the winner and, you know, feeling sorry for Sarah Ann and then gets to play the victim when she gets screwed over by this woman she was competing with. And if that was all that happened, I'd have more empathy for Laura. But Laura is not a girl's girl. The rules only apply for a girl's girl when they're aligned with what she wants. Because her whole meeting with this whole scene with what's-her-face. Oh my god, I forget her name. Heather, the mom. I'm just going to say Megan Fox and the mom. It's just too confusing to keep track of the name. She initiated this. So, if you were to see Jimmy, would you have things to say? She was the one who was like, have you looked him up on social media? And was really excited to find out that Jimmy and her may be able to be together. Even though, just like her, uh, there is another woman engaged to a man on that show. Like, she's such a hypocrite, y'all. I'm really annoyed that this mom wants uh, a stepdad so bad for her daughter. And has her daughter, like, way too invested in this. Like, honey, not only is stepdad the most likely one to be a threat to your daughter... Of all people, a Jimmy? And she's like, oh my god, he must be thinking about me. And she's like, yeah. She's all for cheating if as long as it's not someone cheating on her with her man. She's like, so you're not repulsed by him, right? And then look at her answer. I mean, even if he was like, but ugly, I think if I'd married him. I would just like close my eyes and like let him talk. That would do it for me. What is wrong with y'all? J- uh, Jimmy, his voice is not that great. He sounds like every prick that I went to high school with. Like, what is it about this man? Like, his voice is not that great. What? Also, women deserve to be with men that they find attractive. This idea that we should just, like, settle for men that we're not attracted to because they're, like, good on paper is BS. Like, okay, that's a whole nother video. She's like, yeah, he has a good voice. No, he doesn't. Like, and then she's like, ask this woman, if you were to see Jimmy, do you, like, would you have things to say? Like, look at her. Look at her plotting and scheming and Laura, who is just so fundamentally against uh, cheaters when you're engaged, is like, do you think you talked to him? What would you say? <laughs> like she literally entertains this whole conversation instead of being like, I don't know, maybe you should get over it. This guy's not good for you and he's engaged. She just had this whole conversation. Look at her face when she talks about Jimmy. Like what is it about this man that has y'all so wet? So, like, the mom is like, I've spent so much time trying to heal. I think seeing him might set me back. Because, like, our, we're, it's so electric. Whatever. If, the, if you take one lesson from Jimmy and the mom, it's that a man that gives you butterflies and you feel electric around, that is probably your nervous system being like, bah, bah, bah. do not, butterflies is bad, usually. Like, we're going to, like, electrocute each other. That, no. This excitement is not a feeling of safety. This is all your trauma responses probably being triggered. So then she's all like, do you think they're in love? She's like, I think so. And then they just get a little laugh over this. Like, I hope so for her sake. So despite all this nonsense of her encouraging her buddy to, yeah, hopefully break up the, the engagement with the, you know, Jimmy, literally right after that, she's complaining about Sarah Ann messaging her fiance. And reads this whole thing. Where does she have the audacity to send a message like that? But you should probably send like one of those to Jimmy. Like, Laura, Laura cannot be trusted. Because now she's a victim, even though she's trying to get someone else to break up another engagement. She knows we're engaged. Knows we're living together. 
Yeah, so are Jimmy and what's her butt? And, you know, and then this woman who has terrible dating experiences is like, well, he didn't really do anything wrong other than, you know, even though he liked the message. He's forthcoming. Just don't take advice from people who have terrible relationships. And they get a good laugh over how she's still hung up on, on Jimmy. Blah, God. This scene was written ma- maddening. And then she's all like, I think you mean a lot, meant a lot to him. I think you meant a lot to him. Why would you say that? See, now, if this was AD, I believe, given the track record of how AD has been responding to things, AD probably would have been like, yeah, I know you're hung up on him, but he's engaged. Right? But Laura is all like, God, Jeremy is so bad, but you should do to what's her butt what Jeremy's doing. Like, come on. And then when she says, do you think that he would want to see me? A good friend would have said, it doesn't matter. Don't do this to yourself. You deserve better. Also, like you're on TV. You are going to become a villain now. Is that what you want? But no, no, Laura's like, yeah. And then look at her face. You know, she probably really wanted to like come back and cause some problems for Jimmy because she wants her man, her man, her man. Um, But Laura, Laura gave her all the confidence that she needed to go back and make a fool of herself. And so Laura, I don't feel bad for you now for being made a fool of because you literally enabled your friend to do the same thing to another woman. It doesn't excuse Jeremy at all. But I'm telling you, pick me's, which we, all of us who raise as women under patriarchy have this in us on some level. It doesn't have to be in a romantic way. It could be with, you know, at work, with friends, in our families, with our fathers, with brothers, with our sons, whatever. We all have this in us. So I'm not like, pick me's or those women and I'm a good one. I'm not othering myself at all. What I'm saying is, Laura, you need to work on yourself because you are not... A girl's girl. And you were enabling the dishonest, selfish behavior of other pick-me's like yourself. And then you cry victim when you get hurt of the from the very same thing. Oh, look at his little ear. Uh-huh. He's like, what? <laughs> he always knows when I'm talking about him. And then there's the whole bean dip thing. Now, again, because this is in the South and AD is a black woman, and Laura is a white woman in the South. Every, and and all, like all these people, to me, a lot of this is a little bit deeper because of the horrific history of white women in the South, the violence of white women in the South against black women and against the whole entire black community. If you don't know what I'm talking about, a really bo- good book to read is uh, They Were Her Property. So white women in the South have a long history of not being trusted and for a good reason. And so you know, we have to earn that trust and then it can be revoked at any time. And Laura setting up, the person that she told Jeremy, I know it's a joke, whatever. She told Jeremy, her white fiance, to go flick the nipple of a black woman. Why? Look at AD's face. She is so uncomfortable. She's literally covering her boob. And Laura's like, none of the mean (laughs) them. And I said, Jeremy, do it when we walk in. She will literally die. Okay, those are her words. Laura said that. And so then he's like, she told me to do it. I don't want to get canceled. And then he's like, she set me up. She was trying to get me. Like, I don't even care. I don't even care what the motive was here. All I'm saying is the impact. It doesn't matter what her motive was. If it's just a joke. Why are you touching her boobs? Why are you telling your fiance in a joking way to touch her boob? That is so disrespectful and if it were with uh uh, any other cast member i'd be like that's weird but when you choose the only black woman on this cast to send your white husband to go do that to to disrespect and humiliate even if it's just a joke i have questions so what is a bean dip it's a titty uh, smack like what i've honestly never heard of this before and then ad's like tez says that that this is what she did uh, like, like, she smacked the shit out of my titties. Like, Laura, we didn't see that on camera, but Laura, what are you doing? Keep your hands to yourself. Because look at him. Clay's like, like, I'm glad he was upset by this. That a woman would do that to his fiance. And that or she would have her ask, you know, jokingly have her fiance do it too. And then Jeremy, of course. See, I think Jeremy set her up for this. I think 
think Jeremy never really liked her. I think when he saw her, he was like, mm. And so he's like, uh, like all these men, Jimmy too. Jimmy was like, does not want to be with the Megan Fox lady. And I mean, I think both these guys were like, ugh, dang. And so they actively were sabotaging their relationship. So he set her up for this. He knew she'd get crap for this. And she should get crap for this. But that, like, these two, like, th this man and this woman are like, and this is, th th this is the second couple that has put AD in the middle of their bad relationship. Because AD's like, she told you to do that to whom? And he was like, yeah, she told me to do that to you. And again, they're upset and they should be. Laura, get over here. And she's like, it's a joke, it's a joke. And, and AD, rightfully so, is like, how is that a joke? And then Laura's like, Ugh, I can't with these men, these little boys, trying to make something out of nothing. There she is. She's the victim now. AD's like, yeah, but like, also, what the fuck? I mean, I made a simple joke. And then AD had to explain why, you know, they don't know it's a joke, blah, blah, blah. Look at this. She caused all this. Her and Jeremy. And their hatred for each other. Because I don't even know that she likes him. Like, again, the, all y'all are making decisions based on your ego. And then, of course, AD's like, don't tell me to relax. Because telling another man to do that to me is not okay. Yeah, it is a joke! Well, he doesn't know it's a joke. Like, the, the way that AD has to stay calm, cool, and collected while dealing with this defensive white woman who's like, ah! Uh, that wasn't my intent. Jeremy's wrong. He's the one for wrong for bringing it up. Well, why are you joking about him doing that to a black woman? What's the joke? Explain it to us, Laura. And again, AD's like, yeah, but he doesn't know it's a joke. And then again, something about nothing. You see what I mean? To Laura, the rules don't apply. And you know, the fact that AD still went to bat for her against like Sarah Ann when Sarah like, I, AD's like, one of the only people who's a true friend on here. Actually, the woman that, that she was in a love triangle with Michael is also a really great, uh, I mean, from what we know, she's a girl's girl. I love the, the moment they had. There's a couple other women that seem like they're not, you know, this right here. But again, like, they had to go back and forth so many times because Laura got in her feelings. Right? Like, this is what white women do. This is what we do. Especially when we get busted for doing something wrong. Uh, yeah, but like, it's not a big deal. Gaslight. The same thing that men do to us when we accuse them of stuff. What are you talking about? This is what we do. Okay? And we have a long history of it. A long, violent history of it in the South. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, that's okay. There's a big historical context here. But please don't come in my comments being like, uh, oh, white women, why do you come in? White women get really upset when I talk about this sometimes. That's okay, but don't comment on it because if you don't know the history, shh, okay? And again, again, again. And then Clay's like, she'll be good, I'll reel her in. So these guys are talking about it. And then uh, Jimmy's like, do you think you can handle Laura? I mean, I don't know. After that, I don't know. Again, I believe Jeremy didn't ever want to be with Laura once he saw her. Just like Jimmy, as soon as he saw her, he was like, no, you're the one. I would never. In the same way, Jimmy's like, you're gorgeous, you're gorgeous, you're gorgeous. Looks don't matter. Like, these men, they tell on themselves, y'all. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. They do, so many of them do this crap. Why are you so insistent that looks don't matter and that, you know, you, you're, you're here for good when no one asked you? So now there's tension between these two. And he's like, I love that for me. He's now, he's a victim for making, causing this whole scene that she also caused. And because these two have a terrible relationship and don't actually say real things. They're like, Bleh. And he's like, I want to go home. And she's like, home, home or back to the hotel? I want to go home, home. So again, this man is like already like on their honeymoon thingy is like, I'm done. I'm leaving the show. And honestly, if they weren't under some sort of $50,000 contract or some crap, he pro and he didn't want to look like the villain, he probably would have left. He's like, God, I hate this lady. But instead, he does his whole thing about how, because apparently he didn't talk to her the rest of the night. Like, so many of these, these men, they're already behaving terribly in front of the camera. Imagine what they'd be doing if the camera wasn't there. And then let's talk about one other couple, okay? Uh, Jimmy and the Megan Fox out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, again, she's like wanting uh, some sort of reassurance because there's a part of her that knows this man hates her. And she's like, hey, ha, 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 out of nowhere. When she says, how are the boys? She goes, they're good, but that woman, what woman? 
that woman's absolutely stacked. And she's like, what? Starts schmegualizing a black woman, which again has a very, very violent historical text, especially in the South. And then she plays a cool girl like, babe, you can say whatever you want. I don't care. I'm just going to say it out loud and and like, oh my God. Again, another couple who hates each other and who gets in the in the middle of their line of fire. 80. 80, how do you get about like that? Oh, her response was so quick and brilliant. Squats and Jesus, girl. I love that. That was such a, like, she's so witty. But what, how else is she supposed to respond? Being put on the spot like that in front of cameras. So, again, like, I know I'm a white woman, so I don't even understand just how layered and deep this is. Um, I'm just speaking about what I do know, uh, having had a, a history major that focused a lot on the South. Um, this dynamic... Of, well, of white women just desperately needing uh, access and approval from and, and also being scared of white men. And instead of actually her just being like, okay, this man hates me. Maybe I should leave him and go heal whatever trauma instead of just desperately needing this man who sucks to pick me. Instead, she's trying to make it work, but he hates her and she knows it. And then when he does the very predictable thing of looking at another woman because he can't stand the looks of her, and he's made that very clear, um, instead of actually dealing with him, she pivots to AD and now makes it AD's problem and humiliates AD. Now, I don't know if I'm not going to say that uh, it's not my place to say AD was humiliated, but I am saying that there is a long historical context of black women in the South, especially being hyper schmegualized that is rooted in misogynoir, uh, white supremacy, like all the things. Like all this is like, it's all been going on for a really long time. So these comments aren't just like, ha, ah, bookshelf, blah. Like there's, a, there's a, a long historical violent context. And again, it may sound like I'm like overanalyzing it. I'm just saying there is a power dynamic here. And I, you know, I talk about like, the, the 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 silent and not so silent violence of like white women a lot of times especially in the south because I, I mean i know that particular language of white women and the southern white women and this is a perfect example of it it was a compliment it's a compliment like all this you know and of course maybe she didn't take any offense maybe she was flattered by it but if she did take offense do you really think um that those two would have handled that very well i mean Given um, how Laura handles feedback, honest, um, cr you know, criticism, well-deserved criticism, Laura doesn't take it very well. White women in general, we don't take criticism very well when we're called out on things a lot of time. That's why they call them white woman tears. Historically, that has been rooted in violence and terror, but it still happens on like a more subtle level or not so subtle when it comes to the police and other things. Anyway, I'm getting way ahead of myself here. Again, oh, he said it in the most respectful way. I said it. He can say, like, just stop. This thing that white women do, I mean, women do it too, in general, just like this different kind of violence. This and this gaslighting and the, like men do this to us all the time. So we need to start seeing the way that we do this to people that we have power over uh, as, as white women, if, if you're listening to me and you're a white woman. So despite Laura being so rude, AD is a good friend and also, you know, and asks Sarah Ann, like, what's the deal? Why are you talking to a man who's engaged? And then Sarah Ann's probably like, well, I tried to lie about what it said. She's like, yeah, I know. I saw it. I read it. And then this whole conversation between Sarah Ann trying to justify to AD why she's sending messages on Instagram to um, an engaged man. Like, it's all like delusion and BS. Like, what am I supposed to say? I should have done, I should have, you know, this whole like, I should have fought for him. I should have told, asked him, are you sure? Like, that would have made a difference. Like, he didn't choose you. And then she tried to claim that he told, like, yeah, you know, he, you know, he said that, like, that he's, like, gonna leave her, blah. And then she's like, I can tell you what it said. And again, AD's like, I know what it said. I read it. Like, don't try to. <laughs> like lie to my face and I'm not going to go over this whole conversation because it's kind of maddening but I think AD handled it really well she was literally she was really giving Sarah Ann an, an uh, opportunity to explain why she did what she did and what did you know what's Jeremy say because like she knows by now that these men lie she was literally in the middle of another like of a tri love triangle with the liar what's his butt What's his butt? I forgot his name. A little incel guy who made it on the show. Oh, Matthew. And then Sarah Ann's like, I mean, uh, he stepped out. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. Yeah, but you sent the message. You left the door open. And I love AD's just like, 
you know, I just think it's crazy for you to circle back and try to get with this dude despite him being engaged. And this just went back and forth, back and forth. Sarah Ann just like wouldn't take any accountability and like, nah, 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 nah. And then he was like, you're interrogating me. And she was like, I feel, <laughs> if you feel interrogated, that's on you, baby. I love the way AD handles so conflict on this show. I, I wish she handled Clay a little bit differently because she calls him out and then he's like, baby, baby, baby. And then she's like, okay. Like, I don't like that Clay gets away with a lot. But I love the way she handles all these people on the show. Because yeah, like, you wouldn't be so defensive if it... If you didn't do anything wrong. Oh, and then here, she's pulling a Laura here. Like, her and Laura are like two peas in a pod, man. But I can tell you, I had no ill intent. Just like Laura saying, it was just a joke. Again. Like, y'all know that the whole, like, um, it doesn't matter what your intent was. Even if your intent wasn't to hurt anybody, the impact still matters so i didn't mean to hurt anybody by trying to break up a marriage that wasn't my intent <laughs> okay you keep telling yourself that and then this crap like my feelings deserve to be heard and she's just like god you weren't picked though and when ad was like uh you wouldn't feel like if you feel interrogated that's on you baby and she was like is it <laughs> look at her face is it <laughs> and she's like it is <laughs> Well, it's clear that you definitely have a uh, vengeance for me. Here we go. So, um, this reminds me of another, um, trope, another racist trope of the angry black woman. That's what I think she's doing here. Oh, well, you clearly have vengeance. Literally, like, like, AD has been nothing but civil. And she was like, ugh. And I love her response. I don't give two crimes about you. You're, barking, you're not barking my man. I love that. Like, I don't care. I'm literally calling you out for being dishonest. So after that very uncomfortable exchange that didn't end well, because I think AD was like, whoa, okay, I'm done. I'm done. The interview later, she's like, I just think it's weird. Sarah and doesn't think she did anything wrong. And she did it because she stomps off with her new boo. And it's like, that's a that's it. Like, she's so worked up here. I'm not going to sit here. Like, everybody can just literally go fuck themselves. Like, her and Laura are like the same person. Laura's like, God, it's so unfair. Right? And then the other woman, like, Jeremy must be attracted to, like, when, you know, women who are perpetual victims or something. She's like, God, it's not fair. They're calling me on the truth. Like, I'm not going to sit here and be treated like a piece of hen. She wasn't treated that way. She was, that was a very civil honest conversation she interpreted it as being treated like Mwah. okay i know my heart my intentions were never to hurt anybody ever ever <laughs> I got intentions 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 it's never what i wanted to do ah! and you know i'm not gonna be interrogated by a woman so now this like i'm telling y'all Women who center men are so dangerous. Because now her, like, internalized misogyny is coming out. She's like, oh, how dare a woman interrogate me? A woman that should worry about their own fine, fine relationship. And then she's got Jeremy. He's like, that message wasn't that bad, in my opinion. <laughs> the only one she's got on her side now is Jeremy. Okay? Anytime there is a man that's, like, you are fighting over a man... I guarantee, um, it doesn't mean that you're not also at fault on some level. Like, this man is like, I don't get it. All this drama. Like, they, they, they are, he is making both of these women look like fools. He just gets to be the quiet, chill, relaxed guy who's like, good, would just be crazy. Meanwhile, there's no telling what all he was saying to Laura. There's no telling what all he said to her. There's a reason why these two, besides their own internalized misogyny and their centering of men and all that stuff, there is probably a very valid reason why these women both believed that they were picked. And it's because this dude's a liar, right? I mean, she's like, it hurts, Jeremy. I don't want to be painted out to be that person. I'm not that person. You are. You are. And now I have to deal with all these women on my own. <laughs> Yeah, you, you are in a bad place if all the women on the show hate you. And you only person on your side is the man who is like basically kind of cheating, based, cheating on his fiance. You do look terrible. I'm not like, I, like she is so angry in this scene. Who's the 
real enemy. I was fucking destroyed. Yeah, by Jeremy. Be mad at Jeremy. I was hurt by Jeremy. My feelings are valid. Blah, 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 blah. Like, love is messy. Blah. Okay, like, this woman is in so much self-soothing delusion right now. I said what I needed to say for myself. And I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. Like, she goes off. Like, she's like, I don't think you should be sorry. <laughs> I look at, like, she says all this stuff. I'm not this floozy that goes after men that are engaged. Okay. Maybe you're not a floozy, but you did go after a man engaged. I don't want to be painted as that person. But you are on camera. Anytime you really want to know the villain of a show, it's when they say stuff like this. You know, I came here to meet the love of my life, not to make fucking friends. She wants to win the man and be picked at any cost. And in doing so, by not caring what any of the other women think, not, uh, none of, what, not caring how the men might be lying, to, not caring she wants what she wants. Babe, you are now, you are the villain. You are like the most hated person um, of the women. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure every woman I know hates all the men on the show at this point. <laughs> Except for the, the birth control dude, uh, like who is somehow the, the best dude on the show. How? How is that guy the best dude on the show? Anyway, you were the villain. You did this to yourself. I have friends. I don't need these people. Yeah, but notice that after this show airs, all the women are in a group chat together. Well, not all, because we know like, like Stacy and Johnny from last season. I did so many videos on that. They're both fighting over a hobo schedule. Izzy. The worst. I mean, that guy was the worst. And those two women hate each other because of that dude. I mean, they also have their own reasons for not liking each other. But anytime you, ha you have two women fighting over a man, that man is usually trash. Because he's playing both of them. I love it how, I will say Jeremy is like, well, why are you so worried about them if you, like, them hating you? <laughs> why do you care what they're saying? You know, like, if you really didn't care about these women, they w you wouldn't be so upset, right? Like, we know that. Hurts. It hurts. And then she goes, I mean, like, she's so upset. So then Jeremy does exactly what she's been waiting for him to do. Finally gets the validation she wants. And he says, I made the wrong decision in the pods. And I think you know that at this point. This is her face. This feels really good for a minute. The same way it feels really good when you get drunk Right? It feels so good when you're drunk. And then the next day you wake up and you feel like shit. And you realize you got a problem. And then you start to feel the consequences of going for this moment. Like seriously y'all. Like, I know what it's like to need that validation so bad. This is why I say like relationships are like. And, and we can get very addicted to validation. It's not even addicted to the person. It has nothing to do with Jeremy. This isn't about Jeremy. This has nothing to do with him. This is her desperate need for approval. That's what this is about. And she finally gets it, but she pays a huge price for it. Go to therapy and deprogram patriarchy because this is what it does to us. We make fools of ourselves and we ruin our lives. Hitching our wagons to losers. And he's all like, yeah, we should have done this together. Yeah, I would have played out so differently. And then she goes, so what do we do now? And he's like, you want to go ride jet skis? <laughs> so that's what they do. This is the happiest I have seen Jeremy on the entire show. And Laura gets to be the, I know, he's supposed to protect my fucking heart. The way Jimmy is supposed to protect Megan Fox. She's like, bye. <laughs> like, this is some villain stuff here. Oh my God, look at your face. Look at that. Smooshy, smooshy. <laughs> So now Laura is paying for the consequences of her action of fighting over a man who is trash. You actually knew this, Laura. You knew this. You went in there and were like, oh my God, I'm crying. Like, I'm so sad. Like, there's another woman. Like, and he's out there. <laughs> like, have you seen Jeremy this happen? Look at him. He's just like, oh my God. And meanwhile, Laura's out there crying, saying this. He should have never involved me in this situation. Okay, again, every single time, with the exception of Bar Barnett or whatever his name is, the couples 
that end up being picked at the end, those men are not interested in you. They're not. Brett and Tiffany knew right away. Lauren and what's his butt knew right away. Those are the only two couples I actually have hope in. Although Blaze and what's his butt, I don't know. I don't like the way he handled that, but whatever. In real life or on a game show or whatever, if you are nervous and waiting for a man to pick you because some other woman is probably just as good as you, he doesn't like you. And then he's all like, what am I fighting for? It's time to move on with our lives. I just want to ride my jet ski. I just want to ride my jet ski. <laughs> I'm never talking to him again. I have one more gripe about Lauren. And it's, I understand. I'm just saying this. When he was putting on his whole uh, CPAP thing, which y'all know how, if you've seen any of my stuff about men snoring and how it literally takes women's uh, years off of women's lives. And it is one of the things that is destroying women's health because they're too selfish to actually get this machine and deal with their sleep problem. I love that Jeremy dealt with this. And I love that he's not ashamed of it because he's not snoring. He's sleeping better. And it's a more thoughtful... You know what, though? I bet his ex fiance made him get that. Now that I think about it, that's probably why he has this. Because a single man would probably not do this. But as a man who was engaged right before this show, that's probably why he has this. So he's all like showing it off. And then she's like, I'll just have to go to bed before you for the rest of our lives. You don't get it. Like, I, I, I only want to add this because I have experience with this. My husband wears this and he, you know, he wears it anyway. Because it, for his health, for my health, for our sleep. But for her to shame him for having to wear this machine, being like, good, I don't want to look at that. I guess I'll just go to bed for different times. Get Grow up, Laura. Grow up. Because I guarantee you, if she had to wear that machine, she'd be insecure too. And if he had said something to her about it, I'd be like, fork you, bro. Grow up. Because no one feels sexy wearing this. And now, you know, her little comments are going to give him a complex about it. Although I doubt that it will. And he probably doesn't care because he hates her anyway. <laughs> As we learned later on, all of her instincts about this house were right. She was like worried because he had a well put together house that had no decorations other than like a little feminine touch. You know, the gold silverware. I never met a guy who could be a so This looks staged. Mm-hmm. I didn't know guys like this exist. Oh, look at you. Yeah, they don't. That was all his um, former fiance. <laughs> It's all odd, so oddly organized. It gives um, serial killer vibes. <laughs> like, in a good way. As much as I don't like the way Jeremy treated Laura, I don't like the way Laura treated other women, especially AD. And I really hope you like your new bo boo. You enjoy that jet ski. Because the price you're going to pay for that is being remembered for being a villain. For this loser. I'm telling y'all, women who center men can't be trusted. Anymore than men themselves.